So now let's look at the New Zealand US dollar. 26 weeks time frame, H4 chart, trend following trades. Let's get started. Same drill. I'm looking at this New Zealand US dollar chart in the overall time frame. You would see that since April to now, it has climbed steadily up. It has climbed steadily up. It has been hitting levels, turning back down, hitting levels, turning back down, but overall an upward trend. Again, with this upward move, the economics for New Zealand US dollar, I'm not going to go through the exact numbers or the exact news because the pyramid is there, go refer to that. But the economics coming from the, U, from the New Zealand is based on what we see going to be better than the economics coming from the US. That's why we have the upward move. And trend, we can see that it's moving up in general. Support and resistance lines are there. Let's see how it tests those lines. And then we'll take a closer look at the indicators. Same thing, I will be looking at trade opportunities on the left side of the chart first as we go through that. Then we'll move over to trade opportunities on the right side of the chart. So the first one on the left side of the chart, we have starting at this point here, currency step number one, currency fundamentals. Currency should strengthen as we've been talking about. The trend, we know that it's been moving upwards. Support and resistance lines, look at this. This is how we say it has been bouncing off. It came down and it bounced off. So I got an upward move, bounce off support, up again. Bollinger Band, it's okay. MACD, we've got a triangle there. That looks like a change. So I've got change and a bit of a strength as well. At this point, your stochastics is moving up. So it's moving into the overbought region. It's still going up, that's okay. PSAR is close or slightly below um, the price. You could be looking at an entry, a stop loss and a take profit level. Okay, entry, stop loss and take profit level. This trade did not get straight to your take profit level. But at these points, you would see that it went outside of Bollinger. You would see the MACD cross over. Those are hints to tell you to get out of a trade. Those are hints to tell you to get out of a trade. So straight away, that first trade, New Zealand US dollar, H4 time frame, price moving up, or fundamentals upwards, trend moving up, Bouncing off support level, indicators, Bollinger Band, okay. MACD crossing up, triangle, great trade. That's a good trade. Next one. And you'll see, these two are at the same points. Trade number one and trade number two are at similar points. And you answer it almost quite similar as well. Same thing, fundamentals of the currency should strengthen. We've seen that. Trend has been going up. We've seen that. Support and resistance. You can see that again, it's hit support and bouncing up. Bouncing up support. Up again. It's within Bollinger Band. MACD triangle there. MACD has a triangle there. That showing me change. Stochastics is moving up towards the overbought region. PSAR is below. Same thing. Enter there, stop loss here, take profit here. You would sit there, it would bounce. You'll probably get out here because this is where it says it's outside of Bollinger Band. Remember, remember, Bollinger Band is very important. It tells you where to get out, how to get out of a trade. So that was trade number two. Straight away, what you notice is I'm not looking to sell. I'm not looking to sell. 
So for those two weeks, two, three weeks, I'm not looking. Once I see it hit that level and doesn't break above that resistance level, I'm not looking at the New Zealand dollar. I'm not looking to sell on the New Zealand dollar on the H4 time frame because I'm looking for H4 trend following trades. Comes back to this point. And I hope you already noticed right now, and I'll scroll back over these last three trades, they're almost all at that same point. This was trade number two. This is trade number one. Again, two and three. They're all almost at the same point. And this is very important because you see that if you entered here and here and here, you're entering at the same point. And that's where you build that confidence. Because if you're entering at the same point, did it once, made money. Did it second time, made money. Third time, going through that five steps. You start trusting it. You start building that confidence. You look at it and say, currency should strengthen because of the economics. Price has been moving up. Or even at this point, if you do say that, maybe I want to say price has been moving across. Right? Because over the last one, two, three, four, five weeks, it's move horizontally, if you say that price has been moving across, it's still okay because it could have said that it hit and bounced. Moving across means it goes up and down, up and down. So trend moving across or moving up, support resistance is bouncing off. It's hit support and it's bouncing off support. So it's going again going up. Indicators shows a change. Indicators shows strength. Upward move, enter there, stop loss below, take profit level near resistance. You would see this is a very good trade. And I like this trade in particular because this is where you've seen it happen for the third time already. As many times as you repeat a good trade, that's where you build that confidence in your trades and in the strategy. The fourth trade, again, this is where it gets easy. This is where it gets easy because fundamentals is there, it's strengthening. New Zealand US dollar should strengthen. Trend, it, even if you say it was ranging or if you say it was moving up, it was moving across or moving up, right now it is breaking through resistance, breaking through the resistance level. Your indicators, Bollinger Band is outside. Price is outside of Bollinger Band. MAC is, looks like it's changing. This one shows a bit of strength. So this is where you need to take note. Outside of Bollinger Band, MACD change, MACD strength. What happened was it went up, it turned down, and then it went up again. You could still make money or you will still make money if you enter the buy, stop loss, take profit level. But it took a long time. It took a long time for that trade to play out. All because if you entered this trade, you would have ignored falling Japan as one of your indicators. You would have ignored Bollinger Band, you would have chosen Bollinger Band over MAC, you chosen MACD over Bollinger Band. You jump into that trade, you would see that it went up and then it started coming down. At that point, you would have closed off the trade. Most often, now we're doing back testing, you would say you hold it and let it hit take profit. But most often, if you enter the trade there, it looked like you make some money, it comes down, you close out the trade with a small loss. So, what I want to repeat to you is that if you ignore Ball in Japan, that's where it goes up and comes back down. You get into a bit of a trouble. If you ignore or you jump MACD ahead of Bollinger Band, you ignore Bollinger Band and you say, oh wait, MACD is crossing, MACD is crossing, then you're going to say, what's going to happen? It's going to go up, turn back down, panic, close out your trade. So things to take note of, really follow the sequence, follow the method, five steps, Go through the indicators by sequence. The next trade here is a lot better. You'll see that it's gone up, 
same thing, currency strength on the fundamentals, trend going very clearly going up, price breaking resistance, breaking through resistance level, indicators, it's okay, it's not outside of Bollinger Band, it's not outside of Bollinger Band, MACD look at that strength on the slow one, look at MACD strength on the fast one, That'll be a great trade. It is in your overbought region. That's okay. Price is still going to go up. Great trade. This is where you would look to buy here. Stop loss. Take profit level. It goes up. You could get out. You most likely would have got out there because you would have learned your lesson. Once it's outside of Bollinger Band, get out of your trade. So imagine getting into a trade. In four hours, getting out on a new candle, getting out, making a profit, and you're out. Or if you chose, you could hold on to it. And then in less than a week, it'll be half a week's time, hit your take profit level. This is also why I come back to recommending that you look at the H4 time frame because a lot of times you're not going to be able to sit there and wait and for the trade to play out. You can choose to Look for a trade based on the five steps. Put in your entry price, put in your stop loss, put in your take profit levels, and let it run. It might take half a week, it might take a couple of days, but then you know that with these steps, you're gonna be a bit more confident, you hold on to that trade, and let it run towards your take profit level. Again, back here, so what you notice here is, it's moving up, currency should strengthen, price is moving up. If you force a trade, you say that at this point it hasn't done much, and it, you would like to enter a trade and say it's moving towards resistance. It doesn't really look like it's moving towards resistance, you, but then you go into Bollinger Bands and you say, Bollinger Bands is okay, but MACD looks like strength, or change coming up on a slow one, I want to jump into a trade. What's going to happen at this point is you enter there, stop loss, take profit. Look at it, it doesn't work. Big stop loss, small take profit level. You will still make money, but if it does shoot down, one bad trade could take away several good trades, several profits, several profits from good trades. So, don't rush a trade. Don't force a trade. Don't try and jump ahead. Answer the questions as you see, not as you hope it plays out. <clears throat> and then this one here, this is actually a lot better. You see currency should strengthen. Price is moving up or has been moving up. If you say that price has been moving across, that's okay as well because as it goes across in a range, it hits the top, it turns down, it hits the bottom, it turns up. So you can say, remember when we start looking at trend, you can say short term, moving across. Medium to longer term, moving up. So if short term is moving across, medium and longer term is moving up, I'm definitely not looking to sell. All I want you to do looking at trend is to eliminate one option, which is to not sell. Or if it's going down and moving across, to not buy. Because if you're not getting into that wrong direction, it saves you a lot of heartache. So here you can see price is moving up. It's an uptrend. It's come down, it's hit support level, it's bouncing off support. Indicator shows change, indicator shows change, still inside Bollinger Band. If you did buy at this point, stop loss here, take profit level there. Looks about one to one, not the most textbook trade, but it is a good trade that you can jump into based on the five steps. <clears throat> So those were all the trades on the left side of the New Zealand US dollar H4 time frame, applying the five-step process 
to all the trades. And you'll see that, I hope you caught that point where if you followed the five steps, answer as it should be, you would have made a good trade. That one example where I showed you where you jump into a trade and try and force that answer on the support resistance, saying that it's moving towards, but it's actually just sitting there. You, would, you could still make money, but it becomes big risk, small profit, or it takes a bit longer to get to your profit level. Now we start looking at the right side of the New Zealand US dollar chart. And we start looking, again, we know that trend has been going up. Economics is still the same. Support resistance levels. If you're looking at it on this right side now, those lines that we've drawn from before will still apply. Let's start looking at some trades. <clears throat> at this point, trend is still up. Everything is still pointing up. You can see that fundamental step one, currency should strengthen upwards. Trend, price is moving up. Support resistance, price is bouncing off. Bouncing off support, you can see it hit support level, turning back up, bouncing off support. Indicators showing some change. It's not showing down. So that's a conflict. That's where you have that conflict. You go, wait, MACD is pointing down, slow ones. Fast one actually hasn't even showed me a change. It shows potential change. So you notice here is that if you rush your indicators, it doesn't work. If you start saying that, oh wait, it's changed, you know, it was because the sped up one is looks like it's going to change. This one's probably going to turn up. It's probably going to change. I will enter here. I will put my stop loss here. I'll put my take profit there. Look at how long it took to get to a take profit level. It sat there, it went up, it came back down to break even. It sat there before finally going back up again. And this upward move was probably because of some other news event. So when you start forcing trades, you start saying that MACD looks like it's going to change, right? This was a trick there. It's not changed. It looks like it's going to change at this point here. This one going down, if you did jump into that trade, you could make money, but it takes a lot longer time. I'll come to this point later about time and reward. But is this something for you to think about right now? Next trade at this point here, same thing. Currency should strengthen. Trend is up. At this point, moving towards, you can see that its price is moving. It's not bouncing off support but it's bounced off and it's moving towards resistance. It's moving towards resistance. It means it's pointing up. Indicators are really now, it's not outside Bollinger Band. It's telling me change. It's telling me change. Or well, it doesn't telling me strength. It's just telling me change. We have it pointing up. At this point, enter a trade there. Stop loss there. Take profit here. Not great again. Not great again. This is not a trade. Or this is a trade on the H4 time frame. You're looking at about a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. Not fantastic. This might be a trade that the slightly more experienced traders will want to jump into. Maybe on H1 time frame, not H4. But if you did jump onto the H4, it still fits your five steps. You would see that I will not be looking to sell because currency should strengthen based on my step one. Currency should strengthen, so I'm not looking to sell. I'm not looking to sell. Trend is still going up. I'm still not looking to sell. At this point now, we're looking to say currency should strengthen. Price is moving up. Price is bouncing off. Oops, bouncing off support. Let me draw that again. Price is bouncing off. Support level again pointing up. Indicators not as a Bollinger Band showing me some change, showing me some change. We're looking to say 
Entry there, stop loss, take profit. Entry, stop loss, take profit. And you can see that if you follow those steps, it sits there and it goes straight up towards your take profit level. Very seldom, very seldom, not that it doesn't happen, very seldom when you do a five steps, you apply the five steps properly, does it go into a big drawdown before you make money? What you realize is when you enter the trades based on the five steps, in the worst case scenario, it sits there for a while before it starts moving up or down, depending on your five steps. You see that it's broken up. You see that the next trade could have been there. I'll leave you for that. I'll leave that for you to analyze. The next trade we look at is at this point here where it's turned down hit that support level or resistance turn support level. And you can see trend moving up. Price is bouncing off support level. Indicator is showing me change. That one's slow. So it's slowing, showing me some change. So Castics is moving up towards the overbought region. If you did enter a trade here again, Entry point, stop loss, take profit level. What happens at this point? Goes up, turns down, goes back up. It doesn't work perfectly. It doesn't work perfectly. But you will still make money. You would have closed maybe at the first trade here or maybe at this point here as it comes out. Or even super risk adverse, you would have broken even at this point here. Okay, so there are many outcomes to every trade that you look to enter because that's the reason why the market moves up and down. Everyone close out at different profit targets. Everyone have different risk appetites. Everyone have different holding capacity as well. So some might close out on the first move upwards, happy with a small profit, close out. Some will be fearful, close out at break even. Some will close out because of a technical reason outside of Bollinger Band, or some will close out because they haven't looked at the trade and it's over a week and a half hit their take profit level and it's closed them out. So several reasons of why your trades would close. And then for the last New Zealand trade idea, you can see that it drops at this point and it's hit support level. Same thing, fundamentals of currency strengthen. Price has been moving up. Short term down, I know, but overall it's been moving up. You can even say it's moving across, hit the level and bounce back up. Support and resistance level, bouncing off support level, moving upwards. Indicators showing me change on the fast MACD. Indicators showing me possible change on a slow MAC at this point. Entry, stop loss, take profit. Entry, stop loss, take profit. So it comes back down to those five steps to tell me whether to buy, whether to sell, when to buy, when to sell. One thing you also want to take note of is that we looked at the New Zealand US dollar 26 weeks, 12 trades. Put that together with the Aussie US dollar, if within approximately the same period, 26 weeks, 22 weeks, we got 12 and 10 trades. In this 26 weeks period, you would have 22 trades. A trade a week, almost a trade a week. And you would see that percentage if your selective percentage of success for those 22 trades is very high. Profit margin for those 22 trades are very high and it's not 100%. There are times where you will lose a trade, you will close at a break even or you will even close you know, way before that or even lost. But these are trades that you're not going to rush into. You're not entering five trades a day. 
you're entering one or two good trades a day or a week, you are 22 over 26 weeks, so one good trade a week.